actually over the last few weeks it has been sort of sat dormant yeah waiting to be loved again obviously lately we've spent a lot of time in the RS6 because it's been a new car uh, we've collected it had the PPF applied and also uh, had the first drive video in the RS6 and then I went away to Italy for a week if you haven't seen those videos yet be sure to go back uh, I actually got to go drifting with Felipe Massa Throttle. <laughs> a little bit on the gravel what the hell and Valtteri Bottas yes 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 10 points <laughs> Bottas baby you nailed it <laughs> uh, yeah and then I got to take a Lamborghini up through the hills of Italy so yeah all in all it hasn't been a bad few weeks at all but today we're in the GT3 but <laughs> having said all that we're actually going to be talking about the Audi R8 and why I sold that car. Now, this question has been asked a lot lately in my comments, and actually that question started happening pretty much as soon as this car turned up, and there's a good reason for that. And it's basically because as soon as the GT3 arrived, I think I drove the R8 one more time after driving this. So yeah, let's just go over the main reasons why I sold my Audi R8. Number one is the GT3. Now, for those of you who are early subscribers to my channel, you'll know that my R8 was actually my daily driver. As impractical as that might seem, I did drive it every single day. Most of the time it was covered in dirt. With it being a black car, it only really looked great when it was clean, but Despite all that, it was still actually a pretty good daily driver and I still actually hold true that the R8 is still the best everyday supercar. But despite that, the GT3 turned up. Um, and when you get in this thing and you learn its characteristics and you explore that rev range, I mean this thing revs to 9,000. aspirated you know 3.8 flat 6 which is like I guess in supercar terms is quite a conventionally small engine it's just an amazing thing <laughs> it drives incredibly well uh, and just everything about the GT3 just sort of clicked with me more uh, from a supercar point of view than the R8 did and one of those factors was actually weight when you start playing with the GT3 and then you jump it in an R8 back to back, the weight characteristics difference is night and day. Um, one of the craziest things is just how heavy the engine bay is. The engine cover uh, just felt like a slab of iron. It was so heavy when you lifted it up um, that, that it just highlighted to me that actually while that car was an incredibly fast capable car, it was probably a bit more suited to sort of grand touring actually, longer journeys uh, where the sort of dynamics of the car didn't come into play quite as much as the GT3. And also, practicality, this car has more space. It has loads of space behind the seats, despite the fact that I've packed it full of roll cage. And the boots in the front of the GT3 has easily twice more space than in the R8. And so, as a daily proposition for what I wanted, combining those two things uh, with the way that this thing performs, uh, I was just ultimately getting more enjoyment out of the GT3 than I was the R8. That's not to take anything away from the R8 at all, it was absolutely phenomenal and it was a better car in the wet, which you'll know if you watch my <laughs> videos, it's raining pretty much every time I turn on the camera, although so far, so good. Yeah, so one reason why the R8 was sold was because it was ultimately replaced with a car that is the GT3 that was more suitable to my lifestyle. The other reason is, and I'll film that segment when I get out of a traffic jam, because there's just something about when you're talking in a car and it isn't moving, it's just not as interesting. So, okay, we're through the traffic lights. Uh, I mean, really, I could have just done that clip and said, that's why the R8 went. <laughs> but anyway, the other reason why the R8 went is, as it was my daily, this ended up taking its place, as I just mentioned. And the problem with that is, 
Uh, I ended up doing about, well, I ended up doing 17,000 miles since February. So, you know, in way under a year, uh, I ended up doing way over the sort of, you know, average yearly quota, I guess. So I was basically piling the miles on this car. Now, I normally don't care about that type of thing. I'm a big believer in driving cars. None of my cars are garage queens. You know, all you have to do is watch this channel and you'll know that these, these cars get used. Um, but I commute a lot. So I'm forever going, you know, up and down the motorways and it's the motorway miles which we're starting to get to me. I don't care if this had a hundred thousand miles on it, um, providing they were in the Alps. <laughs> so I want the smiles per mile ratio. I need to be quite high, right? When you're putting it on a car like this. And it was getting to a point where lots of these miles were actually just motorway boring miles. And I thought, you know, this isn't right. It's not, a, it's an injustice to this car to see those miles not being represented truly in what it was made for. And so I thought, all right, it's gone. This car, albeit while it suits my lifestyle outside of the drudgery of the M6, <laughs> um, I thought, you know, it's probably about time that I got something potentially more practical or more suitable to the sort of daily grind. And, you know, people watching this will probably think, well, you have a Range Rover, why don't you use that? Well, I'll be honest, if you watch the Range Rover video, I say in that that the reason that I don't use that car too often is that even as a daily driver, I do like something that is a little bit more dynamic. I want it to still be an exciting, fast, positive drive, but I don't want to have to compromise on the practicality. And so a few cars fit that profile. For me, it's the RS6, uh, the Ferrari FF, and potentially the Range Rover SVR, okay, because that's the fast one. Um, now, the FF would have been a fantastic choice, but when you look at that car, it's actually not as practical as you might think. It, first of all, it doesn't have four doors, um, so I don't class that as a truly practical car. It's got four seats, but you have to push the seats forward and wait for half an hour while it goes pushes forward and then any, anyone who actually wants to get in the back can't gracefully get in the back you have to sort of squash yourself through between seat and beep pillar to try and get it in the back and then when you're in the back there's not actually that much space and the boots it's don't get me wrong it's there but it's not a you know it's not a boot it's more of a hatchback um, so while the FF is of course you know the more practical of the Ferraris for what I needed, throwing loads of stuff in the back and, you know, carrying multiple people around. I mean, my girlfriend, her, her side of the family is colossal. There's like eight kids. Uh, and every now and again, we, you know, pick them up and take them out and go on family trips and stuff. And FF just wouldn't have lent itself to it quite as well. And the Range Rover SVR, well, I already got a Range Rover and I just don't think it's different enough. So. For me, in my personal slot, uh, it was the RS6 which resonated most with what I needed. And so, yeah, that was ultimately the car that I went for. I won't you know, talk about the RS6 too much in this video uh, because this is why I sold the Audi R8. But those are mainly the two reasons for it. In summary, number one, this was the better sort of sports car, as it were. And number two, uh, I needed something more practical to take over the daily miles. Now, I actually didn't do a direct swap. I did sell the R8 quite a long time ago. You haven't seen it featured on this channel for quite some time. Number one reason for that was I knew I was gonna sell it at some point, so I just parked it. I just parked it to keep off the, the miles, but also because I, I ended up uh, driving this more. And number two, shortly after, I found a buyer and off it went. So yeah, R8, you have been fantastic. I wouldn't mind spending some time in the new R8 because from the short amount of time that I spent in that, it's very, very good. But yeah, ultimately, I'm still super happy with the GT3 as the more daily sports car, but for, for the mile crunching and practicality aspect, the RS6 has swooped in. And 
taking this place. So, there you have it. Two condensed reasons as to why the Audi R8's gone. You've been a wonderful car, uh, but it was just time to move on. That was a quick summary video for you guys and the people asking the questions. To summarize it one more time, I'll see you later. Ciao!